Good afternoon, everyone. Um, <clears throat> my name is William Evans, and um, today I'm going to be talking about mapping the metaverse, which I admit was the <laughs> the biggest buzzword I could find to to bring to state of the map this year. Um, and no, I do not work for Meta. Um, I'm just a fan of technology, and um, yeah, this is me actually. Um, I began working with humanitarian OpenStreetMap team uh, about four years ago. First in Turkey, my background is as a humanitarian worker. I was working with the Syrian refugee community there doing mapping of services in Istanbul. And from there, I moved to East Africa where I joined the Tanzania team and have been working with them for about the past three years. Um, in my day job, I'm the director of Open Skies Fellows, which is a technology fellowship program that we're running collaboratively uh, with these, these three organizations you can see at the bottom, Humanitarian Open Street Map Team, probably being the most familiar to most of you, but also working with a local Tanzanian organization called Open Map Development Tanzania and a local drone operator called Uhuru Labs. Um, and this is not at all relevant to my presentation, but just to to, to give a little bit of a background, um, Open Skies is all about young people being able to work with emerging technologies, kind of bridging that skills gap that, that often exists in, in educational systems. Um, so our, our biggest goal is really to develop the next generation of, of experts on emerging technologies in East Africa uh, with an emphasis on women as leaders. Um, and so. Um, my, my presentation today is actually drawing on some of the work that we've done with one of our young fellows named Mohammed, who lives in Zanzibar. And this picture that you can see here, which must be very confusing to most of you, is of me as an avatar standing in a virtual version of Stone Town, which is in, in Zanzibar, um, pointing out a, a 360 video there and a nice map we made of Zanzibar. So with that, um, this is basically an overview of today's presentation. Um, I'll talk a little bit about what is the metaverse, um, origins and, and rules that have been set up, and then and talk about this, this interesting question of how do you actually map the metaverse? And then moving on from there, how do you actually bring OpenStreetMap and, and bridge this gap between OpenStreetMap and the metaverse? And then finally, I will try to do a demonstration, um, <laughs> technology allowing. I was hoping to, to do something with an Oculus here in virtual reality, but I think I may just present from my laptop. Uh, and then finally, a uh, call to action, which I'll speak more about at the end of my presentation. So, um, most of you probably know this, so we have a very nerdy community here, we should be proud of it. Um, but the origins of the metaverse are, are in science fiction. Um, so we have Neuromancer by, by William Gibson back in 1984, which talks about cyberspace. And then of course, Snow Crash um, by Neil Stevenson written in 1992, which talks about the metaverse and probably the most popular and let's see, like, um, Im like public image consciousness um, is Ready Player One, the movie that, that Steven Spielberg made um, <clears throat> based on the book by Ernest Cline. Um, and that movie was out in 2000, 2011. And that's what a lot of us imagine when we think about the metaverse. Uh, and I, what I think is really interesting about this is this quote um, that many of you are probably familiar with from Oscar Wilde, which is that life imitates art far, far more than art imitates life. So I think when we're actually thinking of the metaverse, um, and you've heard lots of interpretations, lots of takes on it, it's like we're drawing from science fiction, we're drawing from literature, we're drawing from movies and books and, and different, different imaginations that have put, put the ideas of the metaverse out there. So, um, for those of you not familiar, there's a very um, useful rubric out there by someone named Tony Parisi. He has written this thing called the Me Metaverse Manifesto. And when we're starting to understand what the metaverse is and what the metaverse isn't, um, these are very helpful rules. So I'll just go through them very quickly. Um, there is only one metaverse, uh, and that simply is suggesting that you know, the metaverse is, is sort of a collective one, all of the different virtual worlds um, being connected. Um, the, the metaverse is for everyone, which I think surely resonates with, with many in the OpenStreetMap community. It's a statement of inclusivity, um, no matter what your background is. Nobody controls the metaverse. I think this is also very important. Um, there's no corporation, there's no government, there's no one that's actually controlling the metaverse. Um, the metaverse is open. 
Um, the metaverse is hardware independent. You know, it shouldn't. You shouldn't necessarily have to have an Oculus, for example, to to access it, or or even necessarily a computer. It should be available on phones and other devices. The metaverse is a network, and finally, the metaverse is the internet. So I. This is, this is breaking many of the rules of, of good presentations, but um, I wanted to put up some of the definitions of the metaverse that I have found. Um, and perhaps more importantly, if you guys will excuse me, um, I will read this very, very profound quote, which I think does a good job of sort of summarizing the state of where it is. So bear with me um, and, and listen along. The strangeness and novelty of this new digital capability is generating confusion. Ideas abound, unmoored from practice and practical reality. Well-intentioned, but naive seekers are grasping for a conceptual foundation on which to base their work and place their bets. Entrenched players with specific agendas are attempting to favorably direct the conversation in an early bid for market dominance. All of this becomes amplified, removed from context, and repeated with increasing noise added to the original signal via social media. Ultimately, none of this public, public discourse will matter. There will come a day when we look upon what we have accomplished and know that we have done it. As of now, we do not know exactly what shape the metaverse will take. And so aside from breaking all kinds of presentation rules, I think that that quotation is a very telling uh, story of, of where we are right now with the discussions of the metaverse. Okay, so um, how do you map the metaverse? Well, you put on an Oculus, go into ID Editor and draw a few polygons, right? Um, it's not that easy, right? This is uh, an interesting conceptual question, of course, because one, right now, it's not really clear whether, whether the metaverse exists according to those seven rules um, by, by Tony Parisi. So maybe one way to begin is to think about who are the companies, who are the forces, the investors, the money, the databases that are behind it. And so this, again, will not necessarily come as a surprise, but here are some of the biggest players right now investing in the metaverse. Of course, you have people like Microsoft, who've re recently acquired Activision, also connected to Minecraft. You have NVIDIA, which is a major player in terms of the hardware building the metaverse. You have game engines like Unity and Epic Games. Um, you have the games themselves um, and, and the companies behind them like Roblox, Niantic, Second Life. Um, of course, you have Meta, you have Google. You have many of these different companies and actually far more that are involved in these, these various stages of the metaverse and of course, <laughs> Um, it's, it's simply become the hottest trend in technology right now, which is why I thought it would be interesting to figure out exactly what OpenStreetMap's role is in the metaverse. Um, and for some kind of geospatial take on this, you also have the sandbox, which is just one iteration, one version, uh, three-dimensional game built on the blockchain, which is, again, just let's say one world within the metaverse that has been mapped out here with various plots. Um, so the concept of a map of the metaverse highlights some of the profound challenges in how our shared universe is shaped. So when we think about how we could potentially map it out, it's, it's kind of uh, an impossible question right now, both in terms of conceptually, because it hasn't necessarily been fully established, but then when you actually think of mapping it out, um, how would one even do that? Um, there have been some interesting takes as well on, on, on actual GIS applications within the metaverse. Um, and this is pretty bizarre territory actually. You think about site selection, <laughs> for example, going back to the, the, the sandbox there. If you want to have maybe uh, an ideal piece of real estate in the metaverse, maybe you'll do a little analysis to figure out, okay, my plot is um, one minute away from Snoop Dogs, and there's getting a lot of traffic right here, so this is exactly where I want my plot to be. Um, work on design, and, and, the, and research into the nature of virtual geography, which I, I think is kind of just a, a bizarre concept, right? If we imagine building these virtual worlds, then theoretically there would also be virtual geography that would go along with it. Um, and then perhaps most interestingly to me is this quote by by um, Christopher Mitchell. The true metaverse is a massively multi-use environment that replicates our real world. 
built on top of a richly labeled digital twin of the Earth. And I think that's where it really connects very strongly with OpenStreetMap. Um, because we have all this data that communities around the world have been generating for, for many years now. And where does all of that data go? How does it connect with the metaverse? And wouldn't this idea, digital twin of the entire world with all of that rich data, be one of the most powerful iterations of the metaverse? Um, and there are, there are companies working on this. You have Geopipe there. Um, and then you also have, have companies like Black Shark AI, which is perhaps most famously known as the engine behind, um, for example, the Microsoft Real Flight Simulator, um, where they've made an, an amazing three-dimensional version of the entire Earth, and it's just really stunning if any of you have experienced that. So here's just a, a fun tool for anyone who is interested in how you might be able to begin bridging OpenStreetMap with the metaverse. Um, there's a very great add-on out there um, that, that works with Blender, which is um, 3D software, and it's called Blender GIS, and as you can see from the, the GIFs there, you're able to just grab geodata directly from OpenStreetMap, um, as well as a, a few other sources, and then bring it directly within to Blender, and then perhaps bring it into a, another platform, whether a game or a website, etc. So it makes it very easy to bring in OpenStreetMap data um, in three dimensions and into immersive media. So one of the things I really wanted to touch on today was this uh, effort by my colleagues, and it's called 3D Street View Dashboard. So you can see the dashboard here, and what it's doing is, is, is the kind of direction that I would like to see the metaverse take, which is empowering local people with local tools to actually create the metaverse themselves. Essentially, we use the same familiar stack of, of open source tools that many of you know of, like Open Data Kit, and we also use um, Open Drone Map as well to put this all together. So what we do is anyone in the world with a smartphone is able to go around, collect imagery, put it through a photogrammetry process, and then recreate a 3D model. And I'll show you a couple of examples of this. And the power of this is not so much in the technology, though that's impressive, but it's more in the fact that anyone with a cheap smartphone anywhere in the world can begin to do 3D modeling. And so here are some of the examples. Um, you have immersive environments in the Philippines. You have the OpenStreetMap office here in Tanzania. For those of you who have been, we've made a really uh, brilliant immersive um, 3D model of it that you can experience from a desktop or from virtual reality. You have um, Iwo Jima, Japan, and then you have this mudslide in Uganda, which, which the, which, which the OpenStreetMap Uganda team recently completed um, a few months back. Um, and then there you can see some of these if you'd like to check them out on our, on our website, meshrader.com. Um, okay, so now the demo. I was going to call um, my lovely assistant up to do this for you in, in virtual reality, but it's a bit tricky. So what I'm going to try instead is to flip over my screen here, and let's see if I can get this to work. So. Um, for those of you interested in, in building in the metaverse, in terms of building in, in three, 3D models and, and playing with OpenStreetMap map data in, in three dimensions, um, there's this really brilliant platform out there which I'm showing you right now which is called NeosVR. So, um, this is actually the project of um, my fellow and colleague Mohammed Maisha, who as I told you guys, um, uh, was one of our fellows who's working in Zanzibar. So what you can see here is that we've actually brought in a 3D mesh using drone imagery, and we also have some, some traditional maps here for a little bit of guidance. Um, and I'm just going to quickly fly up here um, to show you guys kind of the scope of this. So taking some drone imagery, 3D model, we're able to bring in um, a good chunk of downtown Zanzibar and put it right here for anyone to explore. Of course, it's much cooler in virtual reality, but just the fact that you're able to sort of see things in this high resolution um, and explore, um, I really think is just an amazing, um, is an amazing accomplishment. So I want to show you guys one of my favorite parts of this world. Let me drop down real quick to um, this locomotion mode. Um, and so we have this nice 360 video here of some kids uh, who love jumping off the, the shore in Zanzibar here. 
Um, and of course, um, you, I, I think the sound is there, but it's probably not playing because I'm not connected. Um, but this, this project that he did was meant to basically showcase uh, Zanzibar and Stonetown for anyone around the world who wants to visit. Um, I know my time is up, so I'll quickly, um, I'll quickly wrap up with this call to action. Um, there's a lot of things that we don't know right now between the connections of OpenStreetMap and the metaverse. What does it look like and how do we ensure that it's community driven? Uh, I know a lot of people in this room have worked um, on, on bringing communities together. And so what I would like to do is simply issue a call to action for any of you out there who feel that it's important for, for OpenStreetMap to bridge with the metaverse and to build a metaverse that's, that's truly open and collaborative like the OpenStreetMap experiment. So thank you guys for your time.